Hello and welcome to Accent Excellence. I'm Chuck Leyenberger and coming up on this month's show, we'll explain how Roanoke County students are partnering in a new pilot program here at the Western Virginia Water Authority. Also, we'll introduce you to some new principles. So don't go anywhere. Accent Excellence is next. If you would like to adopt a pet, did you know that you can also go to the RCACP website and their Facebook page to look at pets for adoption? It's easy to do. Simply go to their website at rcacp.org or visit their Facebook page. Both sites include information and pictures of animals waiting to be adopted. Help make a difference in the life of a pet today. Adopt from the Regional Center for Animal Care and Protection. Hi and welcome back to Accent Excellence. We're at the Western Virginia Water Authority Center here in Roanoke City and joining me is Jason Sir. He's the Director of CTE or Career and Technical Education here at Roanoke County Public Schools. And John Gamble is also with us. He's a junior at William Byrd High School. And, and Jason, we wanna kinda of talk today, first of all, the fact that we're here at the Western Virginia Water Authority. It's kind of an unusual place to be talking about things with Roanoke County Public Schools, but this is all about an exciting new program called the Registered Apprenticeship. What is that? That's correct. Uh, it, it's a brand new program that West, uh, that Roanoke County's involved with and been involved with Department of Labor and Department of Education. It's a joint venture to uh, be able to get our students out into the workplace doing some workplace-based learning opportunities and the registered apprenticeship itself is an older program but we are just now venturing into it uh, to offer these type of opportunities to our students. We think they're exciting opportunities and Western Virginia Water Authority has just been a great partner to help us pilot this. All right, so let's quickly walk through the, the steps of the program, what's, what's taking place in the program. Well, uh, initially uh, we heard that this was coming about, about apprenticeship becoming uh, a new initiative, a joint initiative between Department of Education and Department of Labor and Industry. And when we heard about that, we thought, wow, this is a perfect opportunity for us to be able to jump in and, and offer this to our students. So uh, in conjunction with Western Virginia Water Authority, who's been an excellent advocate and, and participant uh, in this, we were able to uh, feel out all the nuances of, of how to get this started. And uh, with the help of Mike Altizer through Western Virginia Water Authority and those in the Department of Labor, we were able to put together a really good program. And uh, John's one of the first students to be able to take advantage of this. Right, so John, so you know, frankly, tell us what's going on and, and your involvement in, the, uh, in this program. Well, it's a, it's a very exciting involvement. And it's a really great opportunity for students like us because not many students are able to have this opportunity. It's, a, it's really exciting because when I never really knew what happened all here, but now walking in here, you know, walking in the filter building, head walks and stuff, knowing how everything works, it's really, it's really exciting and cool to know. Like what, what, how clean water and sewage water gets cleaned and everything happens. It's really exciting to know. Now you have just begun a program that's, that's going to be several years long. Tell me about the end result for you. I will be a class four national uh, water operation license. And so that means we'll be like the top dog anyways. Uh, so a lot of them are retiring and they need new young workers. So that's why they are getting us to uh, the young workers to uh, come in and fill in those spots. So that's what we're trying to go for, and that's what I'm going to be going for. So tell me, what are you, what are you doing uh, right now, day in and day out here at the Water Authority? Uh, well, I'm either walking on filter building or head walks, and I just uh, I do my rounds, write down the numbers, uh, take a, just note and see how everything's going, make sure everything is walking uh, smoothly and how it should be. Tell me about uh, the opportunity that this that this provides you, because this is, as you said, leaning or, or leading towards a, a, a good-paying job. 
you. It's an extremely amazing opportunity. Now, I'm so grateful that I'm able to have this opportunity because not many students are able to have this opportunity. And uh, as soon as I heard about it, I really didn't know what it was, but then I uh, told my family and then they told me I needed to take it, so I jumped on the horse and rode it. And uh, I'm really proud I did because this is a, such an amazing opportunity because, you know, this is a good career. And not many students are able to be in high school and have a career. And exactly, and, and Jason, as, as John was just saying, he is still a student, John's still a student in high school, so while he is here at the, the Water Authority, he's also earning high school credits at the same time. That's correct, he's earning high school credits. Like he said, he's gonna come out with his wastewater and clean water uh, uh, certif certifications. He'll also, he's also getting paid along the way. And uh, so he's, he's an employee of Western Virginia Water Authority. He made it through a pretty rigorous uh, application process and uh, was selected as one of the five to begin this process with Western Virginia Water Authority. And we're just real pleased for him. What's next in the future for this uh, apprenticeship program? Well, we see expanding this to other businesses. Right now, we're, uh, Roanoke County Public Schools is partnered with Western Virginia Water Authority, but we're looking to branch out and uh, get involved with some other businesses who have a distinct need in the industries that they're involved with, and we can uh, start working with those folks in the near future to get other registered apprenticeship opportunities available. All right, so John, for you, of course, you're, you're the, one of the pilots in this pilot program. What would you say to other students, other parents who are watching right now to encourage them to uh, consider this particular type of program? Well, it is, I really know how to say it, but it's just an amazing opportunity. And, you know, I know my parents are really proud to see me be able to do this. And because a lot of kids come out of high school and they don't know what to do. And I'm really glad that I'm able to, you know, I'm figure out my career, my future. And, you know, that mean they pay for college and everything. It's amazing. And it just it helps out a lot too. It's a fantastic opportunity and a great partnership of how Roanoke County Public Schools is partnering with our entire community to provide opportunities for students like John here. So Jason, John, thank you so much for being with us and we look forward to many more partnerships to come, but we also look forward to much more Accent Excellence coming up next. This is who I am. I can't do it alone. I'm a good person and the truth is I break the law. I ignore what my parents taught me and I thought everything they said was a joke. No longer can it be said that I am my own person. I'll tell you one thing for sure. I've become a slave to the drinking crowd. I refuse to accept that I can be confident in myself and be popular without beer or drugs. A person like me can easily be forgotten. But wait, what if that's all wrong? What if I don't have to be forgotten? A person like me can easily be popular without beer or drugs. I can be confident in myself, and I refuse to accept that I've become a slave to the drinking crowd. I'll tell you one thing for sure. I am my own person. No longer can it be said that I thought everything they said was a joke. I ignore what my parents taught me and I break the law. The truth is, I'm a good person. I can't do it alone. This is who I am. Hi and welcome to Accent Excellence. We're here at Glen Cove Elementary and it's my pleasure to introduce you to Stephanie Hogan who is the new principal here at Glen Cove. So Ms. Hogan, first and foremost, welcome to Roanoke County Public Schools. Thank you very much. I'm enjoying my time here so far. So you're no stranger to education and, and certainly no stranger to education in the Roanoke Valley. Tell us a little bit about your, your history and your time before joining Roanoke County. I'm actually a graduate of William Byrd High School. I uh, attended Roanoke College uh, where I received my undergraduate um, and taught for Roanoke City and worked in various roles in that school mm -hmm. division for 24 years. Um, I was a principal uh, at, during those times in Roanoke City and also I've served in Danville, Virginia where I was the director for um, Exceptional Children's Services. So I've had quite a few experiences before coming to Roanoke County. So you've, you've had a lot of time, even you know, this is not new to you, to be a principal here of, of a school. No, this is not a new experience for me, and I'm actually just excited uh, to be back here with uh, boots on the ground, ready mm -hmm. to work with the students and the staff here at Glen Cove. Well, we're very excited to, to have you here, and again, you know, a, a Bird grad as well. We're always always pleas uh, pleased to have some of our uh, of our former graduates coming to join us. What would you say, you know, now that you're you're starting your year uh, here at Glen Cove? Uh, 
What, what are some of your goals? What are some of your thoughts for, the, for this coming school year? Uh, one of the most important goals is just to continue with the excellence uh, that has already uh, taken place here in the school. I've been uh, reviewing and looking at different uh, assessment information uh, as well as projects and activities that have taken place here and Glen Cove has done an exceptional job of educating the students here so I just plan on continuing with that. Uh, one of the other goals that I have here is for students to really start looking uh, for personal interests that they have that they would like for us here at the school to be able to maximize and expose them to. Some of the things of course you know that, that we believe strongly in Roanoke County of course is this this concept of community mm -hmm. and that you know you have the student you have the teacher but then you also have the community that's a very important part of it. What are some of your thoughts and, and some of your ways that you plan to to incorporate and bring the community into the school environment? Uh, one of the ways, uh, we actually are very fortunate that we already have one strong community partner uh, that works with us. Uh, they do volunteer work here in the building as well as work with some of our students. Um, we're going to have some activities through our um, PTA uh, as well where we can draw in our community as well. And we're always open to any organizations or groups that would, be, would like to come into the building to work with us. What are some of your goals for the staff? Uh, in terms of the staff is for them to do their personal best. Uh, what it, that may look like is it may be doing coursework, it may be exploring different teaching techniques that they would like to use in the classroom, uh, it may be uh, doing a new grade level that they've never had an opportunity uh, to do before, um, but it's just them exploring and finding out what they like to do for their personal best. So returning to, to the Roanoke Valley, what are, you, what are you looking forward to the most this coming school year? I'm looking forward to the students. I've uh, had just a little taste of it with our summer program here at Glen Cove and as I've seen those smiling faces as they get out every day it really is something that just motivates me to be here every day and to work with them so I'm, I'm really looking forward to working with the students. At the same time what are some of the challenges that you think we're going to be dealing with? Uh, I think in terms of challenges it's always making sure that we're addressing and meeting the individual needs of our children. Uh, we need to be closely examining all information uh, that we have about them uh, to make sure that we as educators are addressing them so that each child is seen as an individual and they're learning. And as you said, you know, working with PTA Glen Cove is very, very fortunate to have a very strong PTA program mm -hmm. here. Um, how do you think about, you know, what are your thoughts with, with working with the PTA and, and with volunteer groups to, uh, you know, to help, help the school continue that tradition of excellence? Oh, I think that it's an integral part of what we do here. Uh, it's through those types of organizations and groups uh, that we're able to build and to continue with the excellence that we have here at Glen Cove. What are some of your other interests kind of on the personal side? Uh, I enjoy traveling quite a bit. I've, I've had an opportunity to travel to a few countries and I also enjoy reading and spending time with uh, my family. Well, reading is a big part uh, here uh, as well, so we look forward to, to having you here. Again, you know, congratulations on you. Um, being a, a principal here. Welcome back to Roanoke County. Yes, Again, thank a bird you. grad. Uh, who is who is joining us and is returning to the to the Roanoke County family? So again, we're thrilled uh, to have you here uh, with us, folks. Stephanie Hogan, new principal here at Glen Cove Elementary School. But don't go anywhere. We still have a lot more acts and excellence still to come. The Roanoke County Sheriff's Office presents the Avoid Program, a personal safety class designed to help citizens with information, tips and tricks to help gain awareness of their surroundings, strategies to help plan for the unexpected, and the confidence to deal with encounters that may arise in order to enhance personal safety. The cost of the class is 10 canned goods or non-perishable items which will be collected at the beginning of the class. Registration is on a first-come, first-served basis. For more info, call 540-283-3107. People who are using heroin are not the typical destitute, marginalized persons, homeless in our society. This is not the profile of the typical heroin user today. Today the typical heroin user is your neighbor next door. It is the young person who's going to high school. It is the young professional and it is a growing problem. Hi and welcome back to Accent Excellence. We're at K-Spring High School and joining me is Dr. Rhonda Stegall. She's the Director of Secondary Instruction here at Roanoke County Public Schools and also Susan Sign. She's our Roanoke County Educator of the Year and Math Teacher here at K-Spring High School. And here, guys, we're here today to talk about differentiated instruction. And for folks at home, this is an important tool that teachers use and method that teachers use to help 
our students learn more effectively. So, Dr. Stagall, really the first question is, what is differentiated instruction? Differentiation is basically teachers who modify their instruction uh, to meet the needs of all learners in their classrooms. And um, there's multiple ways of doing that. But um, you know, when we think back how we were educated, it was it's more traditional, whole classroom. All the all the students received the exact same instruction at the same pace. You either got you know caught the information or you fell behind. So differentiation is a way to meet the needs of all different learners at their different paces, at their different you know um, ability levels. Uh, in, for example, you know, readability levels. So some students, for example, in an English class, we may all three read at different levels, but typically in a traditional classroom, you get one piece of uh, literature to read. We're not all at the same level. So differentiation, a simple example would be we would all get the same content uh, of what we're reading, but at, at our own um, reading ability level. So it's more easy for us to access the information. And so it really is important to kind of meet the student at his or her Absolutely. level. Absolutely. And Susan, there are there are some key aspects to differentiation and, and the first of which and you know it kind of is Dr. Scarl's already kind of gotten to it and that is the content in your instruction. Um, the best answer I can give you on how we tackle differentiation in the math classroom mm -hmm. Um, several different grouping scenarios work well. Sometimes I will group kids by ability level and I will travel with the lowest ability learners um, and, and they like me to travel with them. And then I will jump to other groups as well and leave them to work independently. Um, perhaps I have several students in a class that have missed the last class. I might put them in a group and I'll work with them for a little while. Or maybe we have grouped by um, certain topics and one topic is a lot harder than another topic. So I'll stay with the difficult topic and just rotate everyone through the difficult topic so I get to kind of touch base with all learners on the difficult topic. Or perhaps I have several difficult topics. I might take my stronger students and spread them out through the difficult topics and make them an expert learner mm -hmm. so they can help me. I also um, will put laptops at each station and I will have videos of myself doing some math examples at each station so if I'm not at that station they can continue to watch some instruction again and again. Okay. Another important part though, um, you know, in addition to, to you know, what you're teaching is, is how you're teaching and you started to allude to it and that's, that's the process of delivering instruction so give me some, some thoughts on differentiating with your procedures. Some kids will need a more step-by-step -step approach and to break down every algebra, and it's algebra two that I'm thinking of, to break down all the algebra one compass that's encompassed in the algebra two curriculum. And some students are gonna pick that up quicker, so they don't need me to show all of those steps. A third piece is looking at, at some of the products um, and how, again, you're using some of those products and those tools in the classroom. Um, products as far as software packages? Well, you know, things that are, you know, various, various projects and things that you're doing to get the students to do, to, to rehearse, to repeat, uh, to extend what they're learning. Uh, one example of something that's one of their favorite projects is when we get into the topic of quadratics, and I'll try not to be too mathy, <laughs> is that they, a, a jump path like this, the kids will make a video and they're really great with the technology and they make a nice video and then they have to come back and show me how they create the um, quadratic equation of their jumping path and they also make a video of the jump and of the development of the equation and then we are going to digitally upload this to our OneDrive file so we mm -hmm. begin our digital portfolio. Oh great. And one obvious uh, part of differentiation and we can look around here as well and that's the learning culture not just the classroom but also the school that's that's a critically important part of differentiation um, by in my classroom or varied per classrooms throughout the building well you know it can be you know again as we're talking about differentiation kind of as a whole you know how do you you know structure your classroom and structure your environment to help kind of foster differentiation that I would say varies per block that I have. Mm -hmm. In in the one of the blocks that I'm thinking of, I probably have in my Algebra two class about 50% seniors. So they're super hard workers. They just take a little longer to catch on to things. And I'll have those in a, the same class 
with some 10th graders that are headed to pre-calculus. So um, we will go over the difficult material. It will often be asked in a bonus type situation. So if you can get it, that's awesome. So everybody can strive for it, but we're not penalized. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Scull, you know, parents and teachers are watching this, getting to that point of differentiating your instruction. At first, it can sound kind of challenging, mm -hmm. but when you really start to, to dig deep into it, almost like cooking and getting your hands dirty, mm -hmm. it's not that bad, is it? No, it's not that bad, and plus when you see the results of the kids when um, they're, they're getting it and learning and, it, and growing in your classroom, I think it motivates you as a teacher to do it more and more um, because you see the outcomes and the positive um, you know, responses from the students. And it, as a teacher, it, it takes a lot of planning time. That's, I think that's the, probably the most difficult time when you sit down and do a lesson plan. You're planning for you know, two or three or four groups in your classroom. So um, you know that's that's the drawback of you've got to you've got to prepare more and it's a mindset you have to have the mindset that all students need to learn differently and that you can't take the whole group approach and that's been more like traditional education so you know I encourage teachers one to change their mindset that you know all kids learn different different pace and it's our job as instructors to reach all kids and that means breaking that down into different groupings or different processes and different products and different learning environments to meet the needs of all kids. It has been, it's a, it's a, a kind of not, a, not necessarily a new way, but it's certainly a newer way to think about instruction, especially in the last a couple of decades, but something that is definitely doable and pays off when it's, it's done right. So Dr. Segal and, and Susan, thank you guys for being with us. Folks, stay right there. We have a lot more Acts and Excellence still to come. It is important for both restaurants and homeowners to help keep our waterways clean and safe. Never pour cooking oil or grease into sinks, parking lots, or streets. The oil and grease can enter our waterways through storm drains. Always try to recycle the oil and grease or put it into the trash. If you have a spill, clean it up by using a drying agent like cat litter. Never hose down spills. Keep dumpster and trash can lids closed. Restaurants should clean floor mats and garbage cans in a mop sink. It's easy to keep our waterways clean by doing the right thing. Hi, and welcome back to Accent Excellence. We're at Glenver Middle School, and joining me is Josh Whitlow. He's the new principal here at Glenver Middle. And Josh, first of all, congratulations on becoming principal here uh, at Glenver Middle. And f in many respects, it's not really as much a congratulations as it is welcome back to Glenver. That's right. Yeah, I was here, I started my career here uh, back in 1996. I was named the band director for both the middle school and the high school. Uh, and so I had the pleasure of being here in that capacity for seven years before uh, jumping over to the other side of the county and, and spending 14 years with Hidden Valley High School. So uh, to be able to come back is, is awesome. Yeah, how, how has been the reception of the Gumbler community so far? Well, with the exclusion of my daughter who happens to be in the building, I would say fantastic. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She's been good too. Yeah. No, it's been, it's been wonderful. Yeah, I, I live over here and uh, so I know a number of the families and uh, it's just it's been a pretty seamless you know, transition mm -hmm. in, into that into that role and I'm very excited about it and really enjoying it. Must have felt good to come back home. It did, absolutely. When I, um, particularly, you know, going up uh, at that first football game, you know, the varsity game where we had our um, our kids hanging out with the pregame party and then you know, going up and seeing the, the mountains and whatnot has been, been awesome, beautiful. The transition from band director to administrator when you, when you became uh, assistant principal over, over at Hidden Valley, that had to be a big transition. It was. I learned pretty quickly that the uh, my desire to complete my things to do list each and every day that was kind of out the window. I could still have a things to do list and and, uh, and use that pretty regularly, but uh, you're depending on so many other people to to help you complete different tasks and and work through different projects and then you move right into the next project that you can kind of forget about that that hope to to walk home with a clean slate and be able to plan or what have you and come back the next day and just it keeps rolling it keeps rolling so now that you are uh, sitting behind the big desk as it were as principal what do you see is is different uh, between the principal role and that assistant principal position that you were in for so long? Well, uh, you know, a big school like Hidden Valley, we, we've typically had a number of assistant principals and then also your principal, and so that meant if we, you know, if there was a question or, or you know, something that maybe I didn't know uh, uh, exactly how to, 
to, to handle per se or what was the best course of action. I always had someone to go to and, and I still have that uh, in this, this capacity but that person is not in the next office. Mm -hmm. uh, I may have to make a phone call elsewhere. Um, so really it's kind of a just realizing that the buck literally stops with you. Um, so that's, that's probably been the, the, the biggest mm -hmm. thing that I've noticed early on. But, but speaking of phone calls, and it's, it's not even necessarily a phone call away as much as it is like 20 steps down the hallway, Jamie Soltis, who of course is now the former principal here at Glenver Middle School, literally moved into the next door as principal of the high school. That has to be very helpful to have Jamie right next door uh, as a resource. It, it, tremendously so. Before I came here to, to talk with you, he and I were having a conversation and, and bouncing a few things back and forth just to make sure that we were approaching them in the best fashion. So that's, you know, that's tremendous. He, having been here as a student, uh, on into his teaching role here, on into his role as assistant principal, principal here at the middle school, and now principal at the high school, he just is a wealth of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it's incredible to have him right next door like we do. In, in some respects, it almost does create an environment of one Glenver. There is no Absolutely. necessarily middle school and high school. It's just That's one correct. Glenver. Right. And we've actually had multiple conversations about that notion that we want to we want to serve the community uh, as a unit, not as two separate entities per se. Do we have separate? You know, things going on, yes, we do because we are two, two separate schools, but largely we want to, to approach supporting the community as, as one, one unit. So what would you say thus far has been the, the thing that you have uh, looked forward to the most, either already happened or coming up uh, in the, the year as, for, as being a new principal? Uh, look forward to the most. Well, I'm pretty excited about our fun run that we've got coming up on Friday. So and I'll maybe talk through some events first. Uh, so we've got uh, our PTO, they're hosting their, their big fundraiser this Friday, which means our sixth graders will be up at the track for a period of time and then seventh and eighth grade you know, throughout the day. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited to see the kids in motion and, and, and doing what they do and just having a good time. Um, I'm excited about our first pep rally. We haven't had one yet and that's going to be coming up in October. And I've as best I can recall, I don't think that I've ever attended a middle school pep rally per mm -hmm. se. So I'm pretty excited about looking at, you know, seeing what that looks like. Uh, today was an awesome day. This wasn't something that I was necessarily looking forward to. It's just something that worked out to be fantastic. We had our um, our students that headed off for the Special Olympics, and so we, we actually had the students that were outside and, and clapping and cheering for them as they were leaving the building, and you know that was an awesome thing uh, to do. And, and, and I, had, I actually watched that via video, uh, but that was really cool. Not something that I expected to see or, or even knew that was going to happen a few days ago, but it did, and it was great. What would you say are some of the challenges yet to come? Um, I think, Golly, it's such a great place. I don't really see much in the in the way of challenges per se, other than I, th I think it's just a natural process to still continue to get to know one another. So mm -hmm. me getting to know faculty, staff, students, parents, and they getting to know me. I, I see that as just kind of a natural part of the process, and not so much a challenge as, as much as it is just one of those those things. I, I encountered that mm -hmm. when I was at Hidden Valley. It takes a while um, to get your uh, yourself fully grounded and feel like you you kind of have a a handle on all the different aspects of, of, of what's going on in the building uh, and understanding your community and those sorts of things and I think that to some degree the same thing is true in this role. Um, it's just getting to know everybody and they getting to know me and us working together to benefit the kids. Well, we certainly appreciate the time that you've given us to get to know you here and for our folks who are, who are watching at home. So again, congratulations Thank on you. your position now as principal here at Glenver Middle School, folks. Uh, Josh Whitlow and we want you to stick around because there's more Accent Excellence still to come. I want to be an environmental scientist. I want to be a fashion designer. I want to be a senator. I want to be a teacher. I want to be a professional athlete. I want to be cool. I want to be accepted. I want to fit in. I want to be popular. I want to be invited to parties. I don't want to be invisible anymore. I want to be part of the in crowd. You think you have to drink to be in the in crowd, but giving in to peer pressure isn't going to get you anywhere. Be true to yourself to accomplish your big dreams. Well, folks, that's going to do it for this month's edition of Accent Excellence. If you would like to learn more about Roanoke County Public Schools, be sure to check us out online and remember to like us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Chuck Leyenberger. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.